Hello, Biotube. So in continuing our Transformers reviews, let's take a look at some Gobons. Blaster, Breeze, and Spacing. Blaster is some kind of missile tank, and unfortunately because of the ball joints, the missile launchers kind of flop around, but overall it works. Then we have Breeze, who is a helicopter, and he's slightly green with some orange, which does remind me of somebody. And then we have Spacey, who is a little worse for wear. Obviously she's a shuttle. Getting our Gobot trio into robot mode, we can see that Blaster is definitely the most dynamic of them having ball joints in his arms, but considering these are toys from the 80s, that's probably not the best thing for him. Breeze is from Wendy's, so he's definitely not as articulated or complex as the other two, but he gets the job done pretty well. Interesting how Spacey looks kind of like a golem, also because Transformers is the one with the Jewish influence. Overall, Gobots are not as impressive as their Transformers. Competitors. But they're still a lot of fun. So of course I bought Breeze because of his name. And interesting enough, that's not the only connection he has with LEGO, as his propellers are very similar to the Rituka Spinner, just ever so slightly smaller. Of course, Breeze is a character from 1986, and Breeze, on the other hand, is a character from 2010. Another interesting thing, just like Bionicles, Gobots are cyborgs. And just like Bionicles, this has no bearing on whether or not they are robot toys or not. Understood? Unlike most Gobots, this guy was American-made, designed by Tonka for Wendy's, instead of being a robot imported from Japan. Which I would assume means that Hasbro has full right to do whatever they want with this guy. I think if they're really going to go obscure with Legacy and other lines beyond that, they really should do Gobots like Breeze that are completely owned by Hasbro. It's also worth noting his second release was with Kool-Aid. So drink some GoBots Kool-Aid today. Might as well have Gorass cosplay as Breeze. And if you wanted to see Transformers Blaster with GoBots Blaster, here they are. And now we have Breeze as Breeze. So I guess you could say this is Ultimate Breeze. These 360 spins are based on Breeze's Transformers design. Imagine being. Here are some GoBots I have that are reviewed earlier. But I also have a few vintage ones. Like Rogan, who is red and blue like Optimus Prime but he turns into a pretty neat futuristic double-barreled shotgun. The handle looks a bit odd even in robot mode. Thankfully the head spins around to become the sight, but you can still do some pretty naughty stuff with this. What were they thinking? I mean, really. Funny thing is, it's a real working camp gun. I also have a vintage Road Ranger, but he is pretty beat up. In fact, the clips that hold his trailer together are broken so he cannot transform properly. Though he is a pretty neat little red and blue tractor trailer, designed to go along with die-cast cars, which is a pretty neat feature. Other than the blue arms, the Road Ranger's color layout is pretty similar to Optimus. Even having silver vents on the legs, which the original Optimus, G1 cartoon and toy, did not have. But it's a stock standard detail of Optimus Prime in recent times. Beyond that, there really isn't much similarity in their design. Being that Road Ranger's robot mode is made up of both the truck and the trailer, and the GoBots overall have a much simpler design style. Next to Optimus Prime, he really isn't that impressive. You can really understand the challenge of the GoBots. It really was inevitable that they would be consumed by Hasbro and Hasbro would start making their own, giving us the G2 Gobots and Spy Changers. I have five Spy Changers, Jazz, Wars, Mirage, and two Optimus Primes, both of which were designed later for the Robots in Disguise cartoon, and both of them have different articulation than the standard 360 of the shoulders that the others do. Super Mode Optimus even has leg and neck articulation. However, both Primes have limited arm movement, as a consequence of how they transform. Hasbro did attempt a GoBots reboot for preschoolers back in the 2000s. The 2000s GoBots that I do have are Invisibility Force Firebot, who can barely stand up given his joints are worn down. Kinda ironic because he's the newest, but he is made of clear plastic, so. For some reason, the cutesy version of the Autobot logo that was on the earlier GoBots is not on him, instead he's got a G on his stomach. I suppose Hasbro wanted to keep Transformers and GoBots separate at this time. I also have Prowlbot, who is a police car despite being the same mold. Thankfully, he is sporting the cutesy Autobot logo, and he's got quite a few of them. One problem with this design is the fat builds they have. The chest really hinders the arms, so you have to move the arms in ways that just aren't natural. Which, given these are supposed to be your first introduction to Transformers, it's a bit off-putting. And finally, the oldest of my reboot GoBots, Speedbot, who has ever so slightly different molding, having a light bar on his stomach in robot mode, and his hood in vehicle mode. And they are chunky, rather heavy, deformed cars. Firebot being clear plastic with a red hood and blue windows. Prowlbot being painted quite realistically for a police car. 
The standard black and white with tinted windows. He's even got his headlights painted and his roof lights painted half red, half blue. And Speedbot being all red with blue windows. Though surprisingly a yellow Autobot logo. There are in a lot of ways the predecessors to the Rescubots. The Rescubots typically don't have articulation. And the designs of Rescubots resemble Transformers more than Gobots do. As far as size goes, they would fit in between the Deluxe and Rescan size classes. More Transformers reviews to come? Links below.